Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce the representation of organic compounds. Within the video, we're going to talk about Lewis structures, Kekulé structures, condensed structures, and my favorite, bond line structures, otherwise known as skeletal structures. Let's start out with a common compound, ethanol, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that. Lewis structures take some time to draw, so feel free to uh, increase the playback speed as I draw this out a couple times. With ethanol, we've got a two carbon chain. And attached to that two carbon chain at carbon number one, we have an alcohol functional group. And with Lewis structures, we always include the lone pairs if they're present. So there is the Lewis structure of ethanol. With the Kekulé structure, it's very similar to the Lewis structure, except that lone pairs are not included. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. Again, with Kekulé structures, we're not worried about drawing the lone pairs on atoms that need it. In this case, the oxygen is not including those lone pairs. For the condensed structure, that takes a little bit less time. We've got CH3, so with our terminal methyl group on both of these, we've got CH3, which is connected to CH2, which is connected to an alcohol functional group or an OH group. For the bond line structure or skeletal structure, again, these are what I'm most comfortable with drawing and we use these most often in organic chemistry. I'm going to draw the expanded version first, and I think that's important when you're starting out to always draw all relevant bonds and lone pairs, especially when you look at the mechanisms these can undergo and or resonance associated with a molecule. Everything's easier if you've got the lone pairs and bonds drawn. However, with a bond line structure, if you see this compound or this representation of ethanol, this is really the same as this. However, again, starting out, I highly recommend that you always show bonds and lone pairs. Notice in this bond line structure, we still have a CH2 and a CH3. And with time, you're going to get comfortable and just know that that's there, even though it's not clearly drawn out as it is in the previous options. When drawing bond line structures, if these are undergoing a reaction where some of these hydrogens are involved, you can also draw the hydrogens on these carbons. So we could draw these hydrogens in as well, but again, they're not required for the bond line or skeletal structure. All right, now that we've introduced all the different types of structures, let's go to something a little bit more complex. Let's do pentane. So pentane is a five carbon chain. I'm going to start out with a bond line structure. So drawing this, I, used to, I usually like to count. So every end or bend in a line represents a carbon. So I've actually just drawn the compound ethane here. So a CH3 and a CH3. But I'm going to continue drawing the pentane structure. So we've got carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, and four and five. So this compound that I've drawn is pentane. Again, we could go in and draw all the hydrogens if we wanted. So this terminal carbon has three hydrogens attached. The second carbon has two hydrogens attached. For every carbon that you have, that carbon needs to have four bonds. So let's look at this carbon right here and make sure that my drawing represents this having four bonds. So this carbon is attached to a CH2 right here, a CH2 right here, and it's also a attached to two additional hydrogens which weren't drawn in. So this carbon does have four bonds attached. Um, again, if I saw this structure without these hydrogens attached, I would just assume that they're there. So once you get comfortable with these, you'll just automatically know that they're there. We should probably leave it where when you look at the final structure, Got one, two, three, four, five carbons. This is my pentane bond line or skeletal structure. So going back to the condensed structure, we're going to work back the other way now. Um, I just want to clarify that we are actually looking at the same thing. So CH3. Now in this case, I could go ahead and write CH2 one, two, three times, or I can 
make it a little bit more simple and abbreviate this. Since I have three CH2s, I can put that in parentheses and say we've got three CH2s and we end with a CH3. For the Kekulé structure, I'm not looking forward to the drawing this out, but it's good practice, so I recommend that you do the same since I'm doing it anyway. We've got CH3 attached to a carbon with two hydrogens and another carbon with two hydrogens and another carbon with two hydrogens and now we've got one, two, three, four carbons. For pentane we need five, so we've got our terminal CH3 group. Fortunately, I chose pentane for this, which means that we don't have an option to show or not show lone pairs. So none of these atoms actually have lone pairs on them. So in this case, the Lewis structure is equal to the Kekulé structure that I've drawn.